Hey yo, what's good? It's Dino, and we're back with another video full of crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everybody's doing well today. Let's hop right into it. to ban TikTok is being voted on by the full House of Representatives tomorrow morning. This piece of legislation already passed the House Energy and Commerce Committee by a 50 to zero vote, and if passed, would require TikTok to divest from its parent company, ByteDance, over national security concerns of ByteDance's relationship with the Chinese government. To pass the House of Representatives tomorrow, the bill will have to garner two-thirds support from the entire House. That's pretty unheard of in this day and age, given the fact that there is so much division in Congress. But House Republicans seem confident that they have the votes to pass the bill. If the bill passes, it will move to the United States Senate. But there, senators from both sides of the aisle have already said that they have some concerns with the bill. If the bill passes, TikTok would have about five to six months to divest. But in all intents and purposes, this is likely a ban of the app. On a personal note, if the bill passes and the app is banned, I'll be on my Instagram and other social media platforms. You can find them all at the link in my bio, so follow me there. And if you oppose the ban, then feel free to call your representatives and make your voice heard. And as always, stay tuned for more information. Mm -hmm. They're probably not gonna be able to ban TikTok, just saying. But on the off chance that they are, there's always YouTube reels and all the Reddit stuff and then just random videos from everywhere else. So I think we'll be fine. But uh, I think it's kind of weird that they're trying to say, you know, you got to sell it and it can't be owned by this company anymore because of their ties to the government. Hmm. It's one of the rarest creatures in the world called the big-headed turtle, they're found in Madagascar and are going extinct due to being overhunted. Mm. He's super cool looking. <laughs> Look at him. China has now started implementing the social credit system. And in the video that you're watching right now, the guy shows you how you can pay for absolutely anything but just scanning your face. Yeah. Simply just look at the camera and just click confirm. Literally just take seconds to check out. I know scanning your QR codes or tapping your phone does the same job, but this is just even better to me. So what's the reason to resist it? Do you think the system will work around the world? I don't know, man. That's kind of crazy. Did you know Biden, Obama, and Soros have had their fingers in Ukraine since 2014? We know the vast majority of Americans support Ukraine. But there are now many who are asking, how long can we spend like this? Well, first of all, I'm not sure how many are asking. I know the mega crowd is. The, the right wing Republicans are, you know, talking about we can't do this. You find ourselves in a situation where the cost of doing, of walking away could be considerably higher than the cost of helping Ukraine maintain its independence. Mm, OK. They're voting on the TikTok ban tomorrow, and there's nothing we can do about that. But you can do something about this right now. You can click this link and call up your representative and tell them that you don't want a TikTok ban. 170 million Americans. More. More than 170 million Americans. Use this app. They ran away from older social medias because it's just filled with old people and came here where it's fun. And people have built businesses. People make their livelihoods off of this app. 170 million Americans. And does the United States government care about that? No. They want to vote so that an American company can control you. Because then the United States can have control over TikTok. I have one simple question for you. Do you trust the United States government? I don't. Do you want the United States government running this app? I don't. Let me know in the comments and please share this with everyone. Thank you. Yeah, go share this video with everyone. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think they'll be able to ban it. 
Uh, I think they want to because they can't control the information that's on it. Because there's a lot of crazy stuff on it. So I don't blame them, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. They're actually voting on it today, not tomorrow. I just didn't have time last night to get these clips in a video. So here we are this morning. Understand the importance of the soul. Your relationship with Creator, with God, is your own personal relationship. There are no in-betweens. There are no emissaries. It's between you and Source. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people have a hard time with that. They did 30 years ago. But I once asked Viseas, okay, who is it that we're supposed to become? And, you know, because I was having a really hard time integrating all this information, I didn't know how to present it. You know, I mean, I couldn't talk about it with my own family. There, you know, they're like, they look at you like, you're nuts, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we've all been there. And uh, Phaseus, who was the older of the two Andromedans, uh, said to become independent and free to unconditionally be responsible for oneself without being coerced by some higher authority. Mm-hmm. I agree 100% and completely with that last statement there. I'm going to go ahead and guess that it was some sort of owl. I mean, what else could it be? Earth is a realm. It is not a planet. It is an object. Therefore, it has no edge. Earth will be more easily defined as a system environment. Earth is also a machine. It is a Tesla coil. The sun and moon are powered wirelessly with the electromagnetic field, the ether. This field also suspends the celestial spheres with electromagnetic levitation. Electromagnetic levitation disproves gravity because the only force you need to counter is the electromagnetic force, not gravity. The stars are attached to the firmament. Yeah, that would make sense, honestly. I don't see why it wouldn't. That's why you should always be extra careful in public stalls you haven't been to. This Reddit user actually caught someone trying to film him over the saw wall next to him. He wasn't sure how to react, so he just started recording. But I'm curious, what would you do in this situation? What the heck, man? That's just, uh, nah.
Bro, what are you doing jumping in shark infested waters and just swimming around like that? Like, nah, man, not me. No. Look, guys, you, you gotta watch this video. Satan is not even hiding no more. They want to censor the sound of freedom, but they don't want to censor shows just like this one. Well, how about them watching a new show about an 18 year old impregnated by Satan? That's Disney's latest project. They've agreed to stream the six part German produced series on Disney Plus. The show's name is Pauline. It's produced by the same people who created the Netflix show How to Sell Drugs Online Fast. Now imagine if I came out with a show called How to Sell Drugs Fast. What do you think will happen? The producers say Pauline is, quote, close to their hearts. They're thrilled that Disney loves the coming of age story as much as we do. Don't get me wrong, I'm not encouraging a boycott of Disney. That's for you to decide as parents. But you should let Disney know how you feel. Movie Guide chairman and founder Ted Bear is calling on parents to petition Disney Plus to stop the release of Pauline on their platform. Bear wants to keep, quote, twisted and disturbing content from corrupting our children's values and beliefs. Remember the popular saying back in the 1990s, what would him. Jesus do? Maybe it's time the folks at Disney start asking themselves, what would Walt do? I can't imagine Walt Disney would have approved of a series like Pauline or the company's anti-family agenda. So folks, let's keep the faith. Let's pray corporate CEOs come to realize it's more profitable to stay out of the culture war. And let's remember to put our faith into action. Yeah, that's just not okay, guys. It's just not okay. The government is hiding what's at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. There's something hidden at the bottom of the Grand Canyon that the highest authorities don't want you to discover and its existence be unsuspected. In the 1850s, the Grand Canyon was used for gold extraction. When people started exploiting it, the gold index plummeted due to the excessive amount of gold found there. It was subsequently closed and declared a sanctuary so that nobody could access it and take a massive amount of gold. However, there was a man named Seth Tanner who was an explorer. He explored a cave in the Grand Canyon and claimed to have seen ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs inside one of these caves. His theory suggests that the Grand Canyon holds the lost city of El Dorado, the city of gold that has never been found. The theory suggests that it is literally located in the Grand Canyon, at the bottom of its caves. The reason why those in power would try to keep it secret is that it would cause the gold price to collapse. But recently, supporters of this theory have decided to find out the truth and have gone to the Grand Canyon. Mm. I could tell you there's probably nothing there. I've been to the Grand Canyon a few times. You know what the darkest conspiracy theory about aliens is? That Earth is essentially a farm and human beings are the vessels that contain souls and they want us because this is how they create souls. And so they're farming us. They've created us. Mm -hmm. So we started off as primates. And through some sort of genetic intervention, I'm not saying I believe this. I'm just saying that this is like top of the food chain. Put your tinfoil hat on super tight. That we, they farm us. And that the whole reason why human beings are involved in this conflict, constant conflict, is, is to, it's all of it is to increase our competition with each other, increase our ability to control resources, which will increase our technology, which will ultimately lead to us creating this being that we're going to create. That would make an awesome movie, Joe. <laughs> that would make an awesome movie. The Poltergeist. Okay. I don't know about that. It's pretty funny to watch that. Yeah, so I'm not sure what I think about that. It did look like little gremlins though, but it could have been like some cats or something and the camera's messing up. Just being realistic, you know.
¿Hola? ¿Hay alguien ahí? No. Y Manu. Tira, 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 vamos a ver, vamos a ver qué. En Manu, no. Espérate, 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 espérate. Tira, 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 tira. Asoma la cámara. Espérate, espérate. Espérate, lo que hay. No hay nada. Bueno. Vale. ¡Hostia puta! ¡Ah! ¡Ah! ¡Corre, bueno! ¡Corre! ¡What the fuck! Yeah, I don't know. I'd, uh... I'd probably go in there and start stomping on it or something and be like, this is my house. <laughs> I don't know that I'd take off running. Not if there's three of us full grown dudes. Like, come on, man. Oh, they're gonna go right over them, dude. They're down. They're down. Oh, come on, man. He's just gonna go right over the top of the... There's nobody in there. Dude, there's nobody in there. There's nobody on deck. There's nobody in the warehouse. Oh, my God. We have divers right there. They just ran them over. Those are our divers. Dive flag's up. And the flag is up. That's the ghost! Bro, look at that! What is that? I told you the ghost! That's an invisible boat! No, that's a ghost! I'm telling you, there's ghost. No. Oh, I hope I got. I hope, I hope I got it on your camera. What he's still, that? he's still moving. He's still. Moving. You said that's an invisible boat, man. What do you do in these situations? No, why you touch me? Do you make a run? Do you stay still? Or do you keep moving away from me? It's cute, but like, no, get away. Let me know what you would do. That's one of the mean ones. No, we did find a bear. Actually, we didn't find it. We were both napping. Four bears. Four bears. We were napping. And uh, a mama bear and her three cubs were rustling around in the brush near us. And Tess woke me up and said, Mac, there's a bear. And I was like, what? I got up, I packed all my shit in the bag, and then we ran away. And we're still looking for it. And she even said, hi, bear. And then it just started coming towards us. Hopefully this TikTok gets posted. <laughs> Otherwise, we're dead. My fight or flight is literally in overdrive right now. We, oh we can't so see it. Well, oh, I'm sure. If I checked mine right now, it's somewhere down there by the river. We climbed up the granite. Scrambled. We Scrambled. She's carrying, <laughs> she's carrying her sleeping bag. I'm my sleeping pad. She has on literally generic brand Crocs. <laughs> uh, my sleeping pad, I deflated really quick and shoved in the top of my bag. Update. Tess is packing her pack. I walked up this ridge to look for it and it was sitting there with its little cubs just right over the ridge. So I was within maybe 10 feet of this bear and then I saw them and it made eye contact with me and I ran down and she didn't follow me this time. Bear minimum kind of thing. That's wild. Glad y'all are safe though because obviously the video got posted. You need to have water, you need to have uh, a, a, a radio on batteries and you need to have a uh, a flashlight on, on batteries to make sure that you can survive the first 36 hours. Things like that. That's simple things. But it starts there. The, the realization that not everything is planable, not everything is going to be honky-dory in the next 20 years. I'm not saying it is going wrong tomorrow, but we have to realize it's not a given that we are in peace. And that's why we have the plans. That's why we are preparing for a conflict with, uh, uh, with Russia and the terror groups. If it comes to it, if they attack us, we're not seeking any conflict. But if they attack us, we have to be ready.
Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I get that. Why is nobody talking about this? What? Um, if you can't read, let me read it for you. It says, if the House of Representatives votes to ban TikTok on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, tomorrow, the government will take away the community that you and millions of other Americans love. We're, we're not going to let this happen, right? Like, um, I, I didn't know if anybody knew, because I didn't know this was happening. I opened TikTok and I got that notification and I was like, excuse me? Like, they, they can't do that. I mean, they can do that, but, like, we're not going to let it happen, right? Like, they're bluffing, right? Because this happened, like, four years ago, and, like, nothing happened about it, right? So, like, they can't just, like, like, I, I don't know how it works. Like, if they vote on it, it's just, like, boom, like, gone? Or, like, like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm freaking out right now. If you see that notification, call the number. I don't know how much if that, like, calling that number helps, but please do it. Please don't ban TikTok. <laughs> I thought TikTok was in this back for life. Hmm. Why are you freaking out so much? All right, guys, I got, I got to document this because we just had clear skies about five minutes ago. And all of a sudden, all this stuff started popping out of airplanes. Now, look at look at this black. What is this black line right here? Look at that. It's from an airplane. You can see that black, like shadowy looking thing. And then this thing goes all the way across the sky. This is on. Yeah, they are pretty crazy to look at whenever you see them. That is terrifying, and it looks really, really fun. President Biden, something the special counsel said in his report is that one of the reasons you were not charged is because, in his description, you are a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. I'm well-meaning, and I'm an elderly man, and I know what the hell I'm doing. I've been president, and I put this country back on its feet. I don't need his recommendation. It's How totally bad out. is your memory, and can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I let you speak. That's you, uh, that's that's. Your memory has gotten worse, Mr. No, president. No, my memory is not good. My memory is fine. My memory. Take a look at what I've done since I've become president. None of you thought I could pass any of the things I got passed. How'd that happen? You know, I guess I just forgot what was going on. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, who is it? It's so weird. Is it you? Is it me? It's not me. It's a motion sensor. There's no one over there. Maybe. Do it one more time. Do it one more time. Please? <laughs> one last time. You... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so are we friends now? Can you do it again if we're friends now? Oh. We're not friends? You don't like me? Are you a doctor? Are you a... <laughs> Wait, so do it again if you're a doctor. <laughs> Wait, are you messing with us or are you actually a doctor? I don't know. Are you just messing with us? I don't know. I don't know, man. Good job, Rippy. Good job, Rippy. Good job. Keep going. Come on, Rippy. Come on. Uh, hey. No. Oh. Rippy, come here. Rippy, come here. Hey, come here, Brady. Quit. Hey, hey. 
Alright, so the guy in the tree that's totally fake, and he looked like he was maybe like four foot up off the ground. Hmm. That was pretty cool looking. Supposedly was in Australia. The court will be right to conclude that uh, Israel's violations result in Israel's duty to comply with the obligations it had breached, to put an end to its ongoing violations, and to provide reparation for the damaged cost. This means, uh, first and foremost, that Israel is under an international legal obligation to respect the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination and to stop all settlement activities in the occupied territory. Attempts to put the conflict into a low-intensity mode instead of a comprehensive settlement have time and again provoked eruption, eruptions in the occupied territories. The current wave of violence is no exception. Yeah, there's really not a reason for all the violence, but there never is. Yeah, now that, <laughs> that's a scary job, I bet. Hey, hey, King Tut, do you know that the pyramids prove we don't live on a spinning ball? Well, if you don't agree with me, stick around, you might just change your mind. Let's first look at how old the mainstream tells us the pyramids are. Mainstream likes to tell us that the pyramids are about 4,500 years old. But there have been other researchers that have thought way different. Other researchers, such as Graham Hancock, who say the pyramids could be as old as 12,000 years old. Researchers, such as Belgian-born Robert Baval, who not only believed the pyramids to be 12,000 years old, but also, in 1979, was the first one to ever realize that the pyramids coordinated perfectly with the seven stars of Orion's belt. So much so, that the size of the pyramids were determined by the luminosity of the stars. And not only were the sizes of the pyramids built based on the luminosity of the stars, but the distances between them were also based on the distances between the stars. And 12,000 years later, we find that those pyramids are still perfectly aligned with Orion's belt. So much so that there's only a 0 0.067 degree fault. I would like to ask you, how that is possible when the Earth in the heliocentric model is supposedly moving in several different ways. First, it is rotating on its axis at a thousand miles per hour. Then it is rotating supposedly around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Next, it is hurling through the galaxy at 400,000 miles per hour. 
And not only that, it is hurling through the universe at an amazing speed of 2 million miles per hour. Never to return to the same spot, ever. I ask you, how is that possible on the model of the Earth that we live in? And I give you the answer. The stars, the moon, the sun, the wandering stars that we now call planets, they have always been here circling us because the night sky circles us and returns year after year after year to the exact same position. We do not live on a spinning ball. We live in a realm with all the night sky here for us, created for signs and wonders. And you have a creator and you are here for a purpose and the world is your oyster. Once you just figure out that you are not here by mistake, created from a big bang, evolved from monkeys. It's time to figure it out because it changes your view, changes your perspective, it changes your priorities. As always though, just my opinion. You do what you want for it. In fact, this is only for entertainment purposes. It's a pretty good opinion to have, man. Like, it, it, it give me some explanations as to why what he said doesn't make a good fair amount of sense. I'd like you to try in the comments. If you believe that you have access to all that you are, eventually your subconscious mind will relinquish and you will be able to tap into that. Now, there are other ways you can do that as well. And we're going to talk about two of those ways today. Meditation. In meditating, listening to the silence within the silence. If you can get into the theta space where you literally see yourself lifting outside of your body and you see the totality of your being, and what you think is the totality of your being, and what I'm talking about is the large orb of light. Mm -hmm. When you know that you're in that space, you have the ability to literally create what you want in this third density from there. In other words, once you know that you're there, that you're above your body, all you have to do is start declaring with your intention what it is that you want in your physical life here. Whether it be abundance, whether it be a love, whether it be romance, whether it be a new car, a new home, what world travel, whatever it is, when you are out of your space, when you are out of your physical form, in your spiritual zone, if you focus on exactly what you want in that space, you will manifest it so fast it'll blow your minds because you're subconscious. 100 percent facts what is that oh my goodness oh my god something exploded Why what is that i can't i'm recording i don't want to move i gotta record this i see that square cloud i see that square cloud that's crazy looking dude <laughs> they said it exploded and then that was in the sky but then that whole cloud looks like some kind of snake face or something. It's crazy. And then on April 8th, 2024, next year, eight days after Easter, this eclipse cuts across the United States of America and Mexico and Canada. It will go over more metropolitan areas in one path than any other eclipse in the history of the Western Hemisphere. It will see, more people will see this eclipse than anywhere else. It is an amazing thing. And so be looking for that. This is what the 2017 and 2024 total eclipses. This is the pattern they make over the United States. That spot right in the middle where the X is, is an area known as Little Egypt. It's where Cairo, Illinois is and Memphis, Tennessee. Here is the pattern that the three eclipses make over the United States, 2017 to 2024. Huh. Interesting. Oh, look, the Paleo Hebrew alphabet. You oh, right there. That is the Hebrew word, uh, letter Tav. This is what the Bible, the oldest parts of the Bible were written in this language. That's the last letter, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew. Notice it's a cross, an X. That's the Aleph, which became the A. You see how it looks like an A, right? Come on. Huh. Huh. Okay. Huh. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Who? Yeah. <laughs> they, 
you get an X out of this. Does that mean anything? You know, when you get these these two crossing paths with each other, you get an X. Does it mean anything that it's crossing over each other in a place called Little Egypt, Illinois? Huh. Well, it kind of does, because in about 10 years, exactly 10 years, in 2027 and 2034, there's going to be a same X marks the spot going on in Egypt. That's even more wild to think about. There's going to be a same X marks the spot kind of thing going on in Egypt. super cool looking place um it looks like it got like weather damaged or something and then they just abandoned it because it was easier than trying to fix it or rebuild i wonder why it never sold though would tell them when they ran out of meth where to go where how to get it you know um where to get it where to be what time to be there and a stranger would show up and and have to have the meth you know, same thing with the robbing of the houses. I had one guy tell me, you know, the voices told him which houses to rob, when to rob them, when the when the people were up, and where to go hide afterward. Wow. And they were accurate. And they were accurate. That one guy said uh, they told him that the, the, the people were up and to get out of the house. <clears throat> so he crawled out of the window and he went to run down this alley. The voices told him, no, don't go there. The cops are coming up that alley. Go this other way, jump in that dumpster over there, close the lid, and just stay there. Damn. And he did, and he could hear a cop come by with a, you know, his flashlight walking by. And the cop was still pretty close when the voice told him, "Okay, now get up, out, get out of the trash can and run." So he did, and he got home, and uh, uh, the voices congratulated. Him. I don't claim any of that energy. Look, I've known some people that did that junk and they they were talking to invisible things hearing voices seeing things going places and just like uh, just like he said right there just like that man said and it just scared the living crap out of me i'm telling you just stay away from that stuff stay very far away I got one more video for you. Congressman Maxwell Frost tapping in, and I wanted to come here today to talk about something that's on everybody's mind. Will Congress ban TikTok? And look, I know a lot of you got that notification to call your member of Congress. Just know we heard from you loud and clear up here. Everybody did. But on Wednesday, March 13th, which is tomorrow, Congress is going to vote on the bill that could likely ban TikTok. And I'm voting no. Here's why. Three reasons. Number one, in an effort to protect us online, the bill requires that TikTok be sold to someone other than the current ownership within 180 days, which is six months. And look, I agree. I am super concerned about the way Americans' data is being collected and used online, especially by foreign adversaries. But experts are estimating that for TikTok to get another buyer, it would take more than six months and maybe even a year. So the timeline is not realistic. On top of that, TikTok is a huge, valuable company, which means the amount of people that can actually buy it, it's a pretty small group of mm -hmm. people or companies. Meaning that companies like Facebook and Twitter who could afford to purchase TikTok could, but that would get us into antitrust territory, monopoly territory. 
So if TikTok isn't able to find another buyer and execute a sale within six months, this app will become banned in the United States under this bill. That brings me to the second reason I can't support the bill. I think it's unconstitutional, and I think it's an, an attack on our First Amendment right, and the ACLU agrees with me on that. And the third reason why I can't support this bill is because of you all. I mean, I come from the beautiful, but sometimes very scary state of Florida, where MAGA Republicans like Ron DeSantis are trying to erase black history. I mean, literally kids in Florida are gonna be learning that black people who were enslaved received personal benefit from it. They're also trying to erase the LGBTQ plus community in our schools, trying to change the way cli the climate crisis is spoken about. So when leaders like Ron DeSantis and far right neo fascists try to control education of our students, it can be apps like this that actually help educate people. And look, I've heard from hundreds of people who have said just that and that they use apps like this to support their small businesses or maybe their content creators. And it's how they make ends meet. It's how they make a living. And so listen, if Congress wants to get serious about making sure that our private information is protected online, I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. If Congress wants to protect our data from foreign adversaries, I can get behind that. Mm -hmm. But I'll only support legislation that actually works at fixing this data privacy problem across all social media sites. And until then, I'm a hell no on the TikTok man. Uh, thanks, man. Ooh, we yeah i can't believe they're trying to ban it again on an election year again uh, yeah. anyways that's another video for the archives i hope that you all had fun hanging out i appreciate every single one of you who come through every time there's a new live or a new video posted and uh do me a favor real quick go ahead and hit that like hit that subscribe if you're not subscribed Go ahead and share this on your social medias so that everyone else can see it. It will really help us out in the algorithm, get us boosted up where we need to be as a community. Help us grow a little bit bigger. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I appreciate all the time that you spend on the channel. Thanks for all the continued support. Until next time. Peace.